just had to take all the thing thingamajings off my chair because my cat threw up on it. He's never done that. Never ever thrown up on furniture. <laughs> I mean, there is occasionally, every now and again, one of the cats will throw up a, th a furball, but they've never done it on furniture. So, yay. Yay. It's now in the wash. I had to take everything off and um, chuck it in there because I have a blanket over my chair, um, but it, it, I didn't get the vomit up fast enough, so it went through. So I had to take up the the chair covering cushion thing words um which is easily enough to do however since my chairs came used very used by the way everything under the coverings of them are not quite whole Ugh. so taking that the cushion cover off was a job and a half yeah mm, yeah i did it when i first got the chairs because they were outside somewhere <laughs> and uh that was gross i did deep cleaning of these chairs i got these chairs because i didn't have enough money to buy a sofa but there we go i i didn't expect to have to do it again yeah so that that cushion cover is going to be cleaner than everything else on the chairs, I suppose. Anyway, <sighs> yeah, that's, that's my start to the day. How you doing? Yay? Nay? In between? Possibly? I need some caffeine in me, honestly. Te tea just does not do the job. Well, it does, but it doesn't. I need some... I need to boost my energy levels. <sighs> so I'm kind of in a... I don't really feel like filming, which is ironic, because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I don't really feel like editing. And I do have some videos to edit. Which are going to be pushed, <laughs> pushed forward until I... Feel like editing them <sighs> but oh well life eh life i'm just feeling exhausted i need some energy in me i need some outside motivation i may need a holiday from life that would probably do the trick i have no money to go anywhere so not gonna happen um but yeah well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, eh? What are we going to do?
talk some books. So, first in my pile here, um, Collective Visions Lost in Transmission. So this is a um, short story collection. Um, basically all sci-fi-ish, I want to say. Some didn't really feel sci-fi, but there we go. So, <laughs> I really have like a love and hate relationship when it comes to short stories. Because um, it's so hard to write a full full length story in the amount of words or pages or whatever that like minimizes you um to make it a short story and all of these stories are like five pages long five to ten pages long ish um they differ a bit so they're not very long they're very short and i mean the font is quite large as well uh it's it's a normal size font let's let's be honest here but it's 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 super easy to read however I did not like these <laughs> I did not like these stories because 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 so I felt like more or less all the stories had something going for it but then it ended then it literally just ended uh, and it feels like you're missing too much first uh, first you're like thrown in because you need to start off really quickly and like learn everything you need to do know about the story that you're going to read and so you hit with this like info dump and then you speed through some things and then it ends <laughs> and it's like and, and it doesn't end great either I don't think any of the stories actually ended that well which is sad it's sad um <sighs> I can't really judge any story because I don't feel you get enough of them. I feel like there's not enough to judge it properly. Uh, but yeah, I, did. I liked bits and pieces of some stories and some stories I didn't like at all. Um, but I didn't, there wasn't like one story at all that I was like, yes, this is it. Not even like, it was like 10% of each story. So put all of those 10% together, maybe you can have a full, fully fledged novel or something. I don't know. I felt like they had some good premises, but it wasn't executed very well. Um, however, judging, if you're just gonna judge like you get in a sample writing of all the different authors because there's a good few couple of authors in there I don't know how many I'm not gonna count um, you get a sense of their writing yes they can write that's about what I can judge from the little little pieces that we get in this um, other than that I mean it was a quick read it was a hundred and let's see we don't need to include the authors by 123 pages so very fast read for what it is um yeah so um i just put the uh dust check back on i read northanger abbey by jane austen first off um i hate these editions because they are bible thin pages and it's quite Excuse me, the font is quite like squished together and I'm not a fan of it. Also, so this is the <laughs> the first, um, what's it called, just after, anyway, um, so this is the first, I think it's not blurred out, so we go to the back, it's upside down, <laughs> someone made a little boo-boo, oh someone made a little boo-boo. Um, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, the, the whole book is the right way around. <laughs> and that's literally just like the end pages. Um, so we're good. We're good. Um, Northang Abbey. A very short, I think it might be the shortest of all the Jane Austen books. I'm not too sure. But it's, uh, it's one of the tinier ones anyway. 
I read Pride and Prejudice a couple of years ago and I really liked that book. It, did, it wasn't in this edition. It was in a different Penguin edition, which I, I didn't like that edition either. I have since given that one away uh, when I got these editions, so I haven't read Pride and Prejudice in this. I, I'm going to have to get new Jane Austen editions, I'm not going to lie. Um, I read about half... I really enjoyed Pride and Prejudice by the way and then I read about half of Sense and Sensibility I gave that copy away as well so I never finished it um, and then in these editions I've read uh, Persuasion wasn't a fan of Persuasion I was quite bored and that I hear that one is like the one that's people's most favourite of them all I was just bored might not have been the best time for me to read it i don't know when i read it i mean um i don't know doesn't matter uh anyway um now i picked up northang abbey uh, <laughs> northang abbey i think this is the one that people say is like the gothic one um the gothic comedy or something like that um i didn't really get the gothic vibes I might have missed those vibes or gothic to me is different from everyone else I don't know I did find it quite funny though at least in the beginning um so in the beginning uh she's like uh, what's her name Catherine um she's like this had it been written in like modern day she would be like um one of those uh I don't want to say like Barbie influences, but sort of like that, like the very outgoing, is that the right word I'm looking for? Anyway, she would definitely be on like Instagram and making TikToks and stuff uh, and making buttloads <laughs> from doing that. I feel like that that's the, yeah, that, that, probably right um she's quite funny though but she isn't she's she's clever but she's not the cleverest so we have the narrators that so the narration of it is a bit like explaining things that she doesn't understand to the reader um and i've just confused myself yeah i do this a lot <laughs> anyway I, I found it quite funny although there was this character what's his name um Thorpe so there was this scene where he comes and he's like well I but I I my horse ran this fast and had to take this long and he's he's all about having that as long as he's there wherever they are um he's gonna have his horse exercise four hours per day why why do you need to exercise your horse four hours per day? Not even like the competition horses, like the the trotters and the the jockey the the jockey horses. Words. I used to work with horses. I should know these terminology. No. Anyway, all the competition horses, all the horses that go into competition, like the hardcore competitions, they don't train that much per day so why the hell do you need to have your horse exercise four hours per day when he's like a carriage horse or like mild jogging horse insanity uh, sort of in the same sentence not really in the same sense but in the same like conversation he he talks about like how he won't read a particular book because uh he heard that the author married an immigrant wow the stupidity of that character honestly what does the author have to do author's marriage to an immigrant in this case have to do with the quality of the book we don't know but yeah i feel like jane austen had a lot of things to like say about the society in this book uh, at least the society in her time um, I found it quite funny, although by like the middle towards the end I started to get quite bored and I started to question what this book was actually about, but I think that's just classics for me.
it may just be classes for me. I did enjoy the beginning though, um, so yeah, it was mostly quite funny. Okay, some more books. I need to change the angle of things, so some more books. Um, the Cats We Meet Along the Way by Nadia Mikhail, Mikhail, M M M Michael. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I met her um, at Yalk. Such a lovely person. Nadia, can we please be friends? Because, um, yes, honestly. Also, I need to read this. So, Nadia is a law student in London, a full time house plant owner, and a part time investigative journalist into what London's pigeons are planning when they flock together like that. I love that. <laughs> she is mostly unsuccessful at, but still hopeful about, two out of three of these occupations. So, she has humour. I like that. Anyway, so, <laughs> despite what the title of the book may be, you only really meet one cat. <laughs> the disappointment when I figured that one out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so... In this one, we kind of go back and forwards in time. We, um, the character, um, she reminisces uh, and tells stories about her past and uh, other characters tell stories about the past and so on and so forth. So we go back and forwards in time a lot. Um, we start out knowing that the end of the world is here. <laughs> um, I think when they found out they had about a year it's apparently a year until the world is going to end um we don't know how or pre precisely when um i'm assuming it's something to do with um toxic waste something with like the air pollution or something like that because there's some i don't know um it's because it, towards the end not towards the end somewhere along the lines we find out that um you need to dig a really really deep bunker and you may have a chance even if it's deep you may not survive um <coughs> anyway so we know it's the end of the world and it's sort of like oh we have these regrets sort of a thing so um what's her name aisha <laughs> Um, she kind of takes her boyfriend, so Aisha, she kind of takes her mum and her boyfriend and her boyfriend's uh, mum and dad with her on a little road trip, I suppose, um, to find Aisha's sister uh, because Aisha's sister, she's been gone for like three years and she left after her and uh, their mum had a fight and she's not been seen or heard from since. Now she has a sort of idea where she could be and that's where they go. <laughs> they basically, um, so they take a little road trip, a little sightseeing as they were, cause it's a bit of a drive. She's literally at the first stop. She's literally where Aisha thought she would be. And the, yeah, it's all about the, <sighs> I guess the friendships and the and the family and the connections and all that and basically just I mean use your time well do what you want to do um don't end a conversation badly you don't have to be best friends with everyone you meet along the way but at least don't end a conversation in anger because you don't know when you will see them again or speak with them or any of those kinds of things um it was kind of a very it was a very emotional read i'm not gonna lie um but it was also very very sweet i really loved um so all the um chapter headings has a picture of a cat in some form of position and every now and again you'll get um like these drawings of where they are um and i really like them i mean they're simple but they're also quite intricate um yeah i love this book it was it was so good honestly um and then we move on to the thickest book i'm gonna put the dust back jacket back on because i haven't done that either um so
I read this, Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. So first off, very interesting um, sprayed edges. Also, let's appreciate the, the end page art and my clumsiness of showing it. Was this, yeah, this was different. What was that song? Say sound? What was that song? Sound, I can't say sound. I keep trying to say sound and noise. It's not great. Anyway, so <laughs> this is a book with a lot of characters and we follow a lot of different ca characters. So we have, what's his name again? Fox. We have Fox Demora. Uh, he's a medium. Uh, he's also the godson of death, you know, death, death. <laughs> Just starting there. Uh, and then we have Viola and she's a um, struggling estate agent. She also happens to be a vampire. <laughs> um, so... Fox and Viola, they kind of meet because um, at the house that uh, Viola is trying to sell, there's a ghost. So she kind of comes in contact with Fox because he's supposedly a medium and should be able to help with said ghost problem. Is he actually a medium though or is he using death as help? That's for you to figure out. <laughs> so we start this book, it's a narration by death. Uh, and he's like, it's not my story I'm telling, it is these people's story. <laughs> and it was such a funny start to the book. We sort of go through a lot. So when they all meet up all the characters we kind of figure out well it's not as easy as just like she's a vampire state agent trying to sell a house that's haunted and he's a medium no no basically that doesn't really have anything to do with it well it does and it doesn't um so there's this thing there's this game where you play death basically if you win you can ask for anything uh, but you have to be very specific when you ask for it but also no one really wins against death so there's that there's intrigue there's mystery there's angels there's demons there's gods godlings which i think are usually called demigods but they're called godlings in this um yeah <laughs> honestly it was uh it was a very good time to read. I thought it was quite funny. I hope that it's meant to be funny because otherwise I have a very weird sense of humour. I mean I do have a weird sense of humour but it was honestly um, such a good time and I really enjoyed the Beth narration because he was quite funny. Yes, imagine that, Death being funny. Um, basically what it is, the game is you play to be master of death. So that's the title of the book. And um, the rest I will leave up to whoever wants to read it because if I say anything more, you, I'm going to spoil the whole thing and I'm trying not to do that right now. Um, so there's that. There's a lot of characters, different kinds of characters, different kinds of humour. Honestly, a very good time. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy to have read that. Just a couple of books I read for this vlog, um, which I still don't really know what what's going on in this vlog, but we'll see. We'll see when I'm editing, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs>